Right, how are you doing? He's hoping that all is well with you, Mambo Vipi, from every part of the world. You are watching us. You are right on time for your favorite talk show, In Focus. And my name, as always, is Eugene Anangwe. Now, on the program, as you've seen on our social media networks, hashtag In Focus RW, you've already sort of noticed or known what we'll be talking about. For those who are just joining us right now, our conversation is centering on the issue of feminism. Of course, in line with the Women's Month, we want to shed some light on this particular issue of feminism and get to understand why most people see feminism as equivalent to hate towards men we want just to break the ice on the program and get to put things in perspective on this particular matter of course it's a conversation that has gone viral we have this going on and this is the question that we had asked you why is it that some people see feminism as equal to hate towards men and all you need to do is simply add the hashtag in focus rw while tweeting and we'll be able to uh, get in touch with you we have people who have already been uh, sending in their views concerning this uh, we have Magnus who said if you come to study it well feminism does not entirely promote gender equality it has a biased goal to promote women not men and women feminism is an extremism approach to gender equality this is his thought particularly concerning this particular issue and we have another one here uh, from Mugabo Robert who actually says I request a detailed description of this vibrant topic across the world I mean feminism if possible before the discussion it would uh, it would uh, shed some light uh, to many people here definitely this is where we're gonna start from and let me bring on board our panelists uh, on the show today we have Sylvie Nsanga Sylvie is actually a feminist herself and she'll be telling us her point of view concerning this particular issue thank you for joining us on the program Sylvie thank you Andrea. also with us is none other than Clement Kirenga who's from Ruamrek. Thank you for joining us, Clement. It would be nice getting your perspective from a male perspective on this particular issue. Thank you for joining us on the show. I'm also with us is another feminist called Annette Mukiga. Thank you for joining us on the show. Thank you for having me. And of course, we are apologizing for not being able to have Nderi Tonjoka, who is a Kenyan, uh, heading an organization that promotes the interests of men called Mandeleo Yawanaume from Kenya. But if we are able to, we'll be able to have him there. But also joining us live on Skype uh, is none other than Judikaila Irakoze. Judikaila, great to see mm. you again. Me too. Thank you for joining us on the show. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Right. So I want us to kick off this conversation from this question from Mugabo, who wants to get a clear perspective or understanding of what feminism is. And I want to start with Sylvie. What is your description or definition of an ideal feminist? A feminist is a person who does what? Let's start from there. Thank you very much, Anangra, for having me. Uh, I'll start uh, by defining uh, gender equality, mm -hmm. which refer to equal rights, uh, equal opportunities, and responsibility. And fe feminism is just a movement which advocates for equal rights. Equal rights of both men, men and, and women. women. And recognize that women have been oppressed for so many years, mm -hmm. and studies have shown that. I will not really try to convince people about that. Mm -hmm. And we seek really to transform social and cultural norms which affect women's rights. Right. So the underlining word here is equal rights, men and women. Yes. How about you, uh, uh, Kirenga? I mean, what is your understanding of feminism? I think feminism, actually with S, uh, feminisms, <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, the word originated from France, uh, the word feminism, uh, which was uh, just simply uh, a medical term to describe uh, feminization of a, of a, of a body, mm -hmm. uh, of a male body, mm -hmm. but also at the same time um, uh, ma describing uh, a masculine, uh, uh, a woman with masculine traits. Mm -hmm. And that was around 19th century and spread to the US and UK and was simply understood as uh, uh, women's movements that are assertive, uh, uh, that wanted uh, women to be unique. Mm -hmm. But for me, I think it's just simply uh, a movement, like uh, my colleague said, that uh, realize that uh, and acknowledge that there are gender inequalities and, and inequities, 
and with a commitment to, uh, to dismantle mm. those uh, constructions that were created uh, since a long time ago All right. and committed to really uh, build uh, something towards gender equality. I, I'll be happy to dig a deep deeper on that word dismantle but in the course of the program dismantle in which way we'll try and understand that in the course of the program Annette, how about you when you hear feminism as a feminist what do you stand for what does an ideal feminist stand for for me it's uh, an ideology and um, it's um, uh, around someone believing mm -hmm. that uh, there are inequalities um, around social political and economic between the sexes mm -hmm. and I think someone should even go further and take action that it doesn't stop with believing just or you acknowledging that you should also take action mm -hmm. to change the, the, the status quo right yeah how about judicial i mean you've been listening to their definition of feminism judicial I'm, I'm happy to hear from you on 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 your ideal you know the ideal elements the things that a feminist stands for what are they how much Eugen? Um, feminist for me is a movement to end sexism. And sexism is promoted by patriarchy. Mm -hmm. So feminism is a movement to end sexism and the work happened by challenging patriarchy. So feminism for me does not focus on gender equality, but it focuses more on gender equity. So when we talk about feminism as a movement to end sexism, uh, one of the guests talked about the movement coming from the West, uh, which is something some of the time I do not agree with, mm -hmm. because when we try to portray a movement to end sexism or a movement to challenge patriarchy as a Western thing, mm -hmm. it takes away that even in Africa, there were women who were challenging patriarchy. Mm -hmm. So even though they didn't get their stories out there as the mainstream feminism, we got to see through white women because white women were the women who were accessing the media. Mm -hmm. It doesn't change the fact that there were women in Africa, there were women in some part of the world. We have never heard of who were challenging patriarchy. Mm -hmm. So feminist for me is a movement to end sexism. Right. And, and, and before we get to equal rights, yes. we have to end sexism. Right. Uh, so, yes, yes, go ahead, sorry. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So as, as, as some of the guests said that feminism is gender equality, for me feminism is challenging, dismantling patriarchy for gender equity then gender equality comes. So, so, so first, gender equity. Uh, th thank you, Judy Kaila. Stay with us because we still need you uh, to be part of this conversation. Maybe what uh, Kaila misunderstood yes. as when I say the historical background where the word feminism came from, I didn't describe that. The, I mean the action, the movement, the word itself. I just say the origin of the word because uh, African societies have been an uh, oral traditional society. Mm -hmm. They never uh, wrote the word, they never uh, pronounced it, but they were, of course, yeah, I agree with her. Mm -hmm. uh, so many feminists in Africa and in Rwanda, I'll mm -hmm. give examples, so many examples in Africa and in Rwanda who are feminists, but the word itself, where it came from, mm -hmm. to be called feminism. Right. Uh, let's move away from the word, because we have the word. <laughs> And we have what we already see happening today. And, and probably that is where the bone of contention is or where uh, uh, the, the, the issues are. And earlier on, you all spoke about the issue of dismantling, uh, uh, the, the, the issue of, 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 of uh, I mean, bringing up equity and then uh, gender equality and dismantling the patriarchal societies. And some people have equated that movement that aims at dismantling the status quo as being extreme in a way that it has caused some people to actually frame it in a way that it is anti-men. That feminism is actually a movement that is out to say, you know what, we are here against you. This is what 
many people actually see out there. Sylvie, uh, I, I want to read your thoughts on, 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 on this particular issue. Is, is this how it should be? Uh, thank you, Eugene. Uh, your first question was clear, what was feminism? And after we have explained, we just realized that feminism, it's uh, promoting equality. It's really digging and saying people have right to the same opportunities. Mm -hmm. And uh, many people actually yeah. do that, yeah. but they don't recognize that they are feminists. So yeah. feminists, it's whoever really realizes that there is a problem a gender problem and really as Annette said does not stand and say let's address this issue mm. that person is already a feminist mm. even though the person does not know right and uh, when we say we are really dismantling as you're we asking we are really seeing in our everyday life the inequalities which are there in our culture in our professional jobs everywhere and then we are taking steps to address them mm -hmm. uh, culturally I don't know if you want me to go by right. some examples right. uh, if we are talking about equality, uh, I know I've been having some message about dowry and everything. Look at our culture. Who has been giving dowry? It's the man, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Why women don't give dowry? Mm -hmm. If you see the meaning of dowry in the culture, it was a gift coming from one family to another. Mm -hmm. And the gift was something really spontaneous, mm -hmm. something you have. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the way uh, the meaning have changed, uh, it's kind of dowry is an obligatory gift which the family should give. Mm -hmm. So as feminists, uh, when we see back, we realize that it's not really fair either for men and women. Uh, we try to challenge it. Why women were not giving dowry? Mm -hmm. So, we're so not giving dowry to the family of the so <laughs> as a feminist uh, i i don't agree with the dowry mm -hmm. because you said let's say the examples right. we are living in mm. because uh, uh, for me it's a condition to have uh, a woman you love mm. definitely yeah. for me as a feminist i see it as uh, an oppression it's an oppression as Maybe. you come in, Annette, I know you want to come in, but let me, yeah. let, me, let, me, let, me, let me go quickly and check here very quickly. Just something interesting, <laughs> because at the end of it all, uh, Judy Kaila, I know you're still with us, uh, but importantly, uh, this question w was actually in line with what we've, we've, we've seen people actually term as extreme feminism, you know, pushing matters uh, to the extreme. Uh, and if we can have Judy Kaila on the screen so that we can be able to have her uh, help us respond to this. Uh, uh, this particular tweet uh, was in line with a thread that you had made, Judy Kaila, that this is the last time I'm saying this. Men are trash is a system critique, not an individual critique. Mm -hmm. We don't care if the men in your life are good men. It doesn't change the fact that men as a system are oppressors. You, will, you all f should fix <laughs> your fragile masculinity. Uh, Judy Kaila, if, 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 if you're still there Hello. with us, I, I, I want to read your thoughts. Try to help us expound on this because you have come under fire as a feminist. And I really want to see. You, you want to do what? And I really want to explain. Yes. Can, can you help us explain this? Because there's a feeling that feminism is all anti-men. I mean, looking at what you no, no, posted no, no, there. No, 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 it is not. Mm. First of all, I want to speak what, um, I don't know if it's Sylvie, mm -hmm. what she just said. Yes. On dowry. She forgot to mention that marriage long ago was an arrangement between families. Mm -hmm. And so when families were paying dowry, it was a sign that the ownership of a woman is being transferred from a father to the husband, mm -hmm. which means women back then were a private property. So when they pay dowry for just a sign, I'm giving you the property I was owning as a father, mm -hmm. I'm giving to you. That's why when we talk about marriage as an institution aggressive to women, mm -hmm. We refer to all those traditions that were transferred that we do not read question. So back to feminists. Mm -hmm. One thing you must understand, when we talk about patriarchy as a system, we really want to make understand that it has nothing to do with individual individuals. Mm -hmm. Of course individuals make a system, but patriarchy as a system it will led all men. Mm -hmm. That's a fact you cannot deny. Being a man gives 
pledges in a word. So, Metro Trash is not my hashtag, mm -hmm. but I have done my, my homework, my research, and, that, and I'm going to explain. Mm -hmm. So, when I first heard of Bernard Trash, who was on Twitter, mm -hmm. I, I was so confused. I grew up with such men that I, I was questioning why women were using that trash. So then, because I've learned one thing, all women relate to each other. So when there is something a woman is saying that I don't understand, I prefer to study. So I did my research, which brought me to South Africa. Trust is a hashtag that started in South Africa mm. after women were being killed. So there is one case that triggered the whole movement. It was a, a girl who was killed by her boyfriend, and then the boyfriend acted surprised. So when they found the body of Arapa, South African women were angry. Mm. So that they are dying. And they are dying in a system that keep us silent. Those were angry women started hashtag. Mm. So when I started the hashtag and realized that the women were in a system, a system that made men of this woman at any cost, a system that turned bad fist and keep them safe while women are abused. So that hashtag but an angry sound of movement. So does the name create controversy? Yes. But when I started the hashtag and its founder, what the founder was trying to say according to her, trying to say men in this system are oppressing women. And that system needs to be abolished which means toxic masculinity needs to be destroyed and erase men who are possible. So, back to feminism, uh, people saying that it's called hate. Hey, that's a question you shouldn't even ask me. Right. Miss Sandry, wait a second. Yes. Miss Sandry and feminism are two different things. As I said, feminism is a movement and sexism. And when we want to end sexism, we go to the root of what causes sexism. It's patriarchy. It's patriarchy. It's men. Yes. Men, listen a second. I'm not that. Yes, men yes. Are yes. Yes, go ahead. So, so when, when I say that I'm a radical feminist, radical simply means grasping things from the root. Mm -hmm. So what, I'm, what, what people have been trying to say by calling it hate, it's anger. Mm. Yes, women are angry. Look at Me Too, the Me Too movement. But we live in a society that has demonized anger. People call it hate. But the colonization, the pollution, came from a place of anger. Women are angry. That even in the 21st century, we have to be oppressed. We right. have to still fight for access, equal opportunities. That's anger. It's not hate. It's not hate. It's so it's anger, it's not hate, uh, Judicaela. Yes. Right. Perfect. Let, let me now bring back our panelists right here in the studio. And I want to hear from you, uh, Kirang. I mean, when you hear this hashtag, men are trash, and saying that men as a system, are actually a problem uh, to equality and, 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 and dealing with this issue. What does it make you feel as a man? Well, I think um, calling men a system uh, is, is to some extent fair. right. Mm -hmm. uh, fair. Yeah. What about but, trash? Uh, but uh, trash perhaps is, uh, is going too far. Mm -hmm. And yeah. actually, it's, it's a, it, I think it's a better approach not to... Uh, to attack men when you are trying to dismantle uh, patriarchy and, and negative masculinities, uh, there's a better way perhaps to do it. But I agree uh, that uh, men have built a system, not men actually, societies have built 
patriarchal system is a negative masculinity for, for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. And what men react to is actually the fact that they don't realize and reflect on uh, their privileges that they've had for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And when they are uh, told to dismantle their system, they don't see their system. Mm -hmm. They don't uh, realize and reflect on uh, the, the negative masculinities. They don't realize that they've been having these uh, privileges for quite some time. Mm. So many writers, mm. Macintosh and others, list as, as many as 160 plus privileges that men have been uh, having for a long time. So right. if you touch them, they don't even realize that they have them. Right. But, but uh, radical feminists, because there are, there are so many uh, groups of feminists, they are liberal, they are socialist, Marxist, and radical feminists. Mm. And that's their approach, perhaps to call it like that, but um, um, it's debatable whether that works or not. Or not. So Let for us, engaging men yes. in a positive way to support gender equality and women empowerment and look at uh, the, their privileges and reflect and challenge them mm -hmm. is a better way to go. And not calling them trash. Yeah. And then uh, Judy Kaila is says that she's a radical feminist and she's unapologetic for that. I want you to talk to me about, I mean, w which category are you? Because you spoke of different categories. Are you the liberal, the radical? Which one are you? <laughs> I'm also radical. You're also radical. And uh, very unapologetic mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but I don't call men trash mm -hmm. uh, because uh, feminism as a movement doesn't attack individual men. Mm -hmm. It doesn't attack individual women who mm -hmm. don't also believe in uh, 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 feminism. But she says system, but men yes, as a system. And not men as a system, I also don't like that word. You don't word. like that word. Yeah, uh -huh. it's, we are attacking patriarchy, mm -hmm. which is a system mm -hmm. that promotes uh, male dominance mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. male supremacy. Yes. Judy Keller doesn't yeah. agree. Can Let's I see. <laughs> yes, yes, jump in, Judy Keller. No, 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 no. Yes. What yeah. is patriarchy, mm -hmm. to be honest? Mm -hmm. When you say, we have to be honest, patriarchy exists today because men sustain it. Mm. Let's be honest. <laughs> So when you, when Judy Kala, you Obama, feel they've been oppressed, yes, but we, 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 yes. we still can't and get away from the fact that the women system. are also right. So listen, I, I don't deny that men, patriarchy also oppress men mm -hmm. because listen, that's how system works. Mm -hmm. Even in the capitalist system, capitalist government. But the thing is, even though patriarchy oppress oppressed men, you are not going to say all lives matter. No, we have first to focus on the oppressed, which are women, and then focus on how patriarchy turns an oppressed woman or turns an oppressed man. So patriarchy as a system is sustained by men first, then second by women, because women have developed coping mechanisms mm -hmm. to exist in a patriarchal society. That's, that's how we have women. Example, women who tell you that's how things are going to open people. It's only for suffer to stay in a domestic the, uh, uh, abuse. But that doesn't change the fact that patriarchy is abhorred by men. Because if we check statistics in the Men hold most of economic power, social power, education power, culture power. Men. Mm -hmm. So let's be honest. Let's ask for a mouth. If right. today men decide to dismantle patriarchy, right. it's going to be done. It's, it, right, perfect. So, so we have to, we can't, we can't unmarry men from patriarchy. It's one and the same thing. This is what you Yeah, Kaila but says. they are also sometimes victims. Mm -hmm. And also women are sometimes gatekeepers of patriarchy. Mm -hmm. So we have to recognize that and try to balance the approach we have to balance that we the use. Approach. Yeah. Right. Sylvie, I just thing. wanted to comment on the radical... Mm -hmm. Feminism. Are you a radical or you a liberal? <laughs> which, which, uh, <laughs> which uh, I want uh, first to give uh, uh, Judy Kael uh, cred credit yes. and then explain. Uh, when she says men are trash and mm -hmm. talking about a movement, mm -hmm. not men, mm -hmm. I may agree with her mm -hmm. because uh, the radical, they believe that uh, women have been oppressed. And who oppressed them is the it's men. men. Mm -hmm. So it's clear. If men oppressed the mm -hmm. women, mm -hmm. so we should really address it the way it is. But Kirenga so says that approach, it's debatable whether it works yes, or not. It, 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 
well, there is different uh, movement yes. uh, in feminism. And uh, if you see at the end of all of them, they are promoting e equality. All of them. Yeah. Though they take different approach. Mm -hmm. uh, if the radical says men are oppressor, women have been oppressed, then there is some solutions for each. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's where you see, for example, because they said, okay, because women have, left, have been left behind for so long, let's take some, uh, address it by some positive discriminatory policies. Mm. For example, mm -hmm. there are few women in sciences, let's uh, take From women, Western. even if they have a, a low grade, and we try to increase their capacity. Either mm. they give them one year gap, but they say, let's take women. Those are positive discriminatory policies which come to address those specific issues mm, of women mm, being mm, oppressed. Mm. There is the socialist which comes and say, no, the problem is not the men, it's not the women, but the society, the mm. patriarchy, all that. Let's address this, let's mm. fix this, let's mm. make sure that we bring men and women together and then we address the systems. So right. When Judy Kyle said men are trash, trash and she try to compare it to the movement, I may agree, but uh, if she tries to say men are trash, I will not agree with her. Really and, and, and I think just, just oh, to... Oh, by to, the way... Just, to, just to jump in on the... Let's trash hear thing. from Kirenga first, yes. Uh, I think they, uh, that's what I said. I think calling men trash is going too far. Perhaps to some extent you, you have a point. But again, we're talking about a system. And the system means structures, means mm -hmm. people. There are men and women, institutions who have been built for a long time. And we forget that there are men mm -hmm. who are good men who want to change things, mm -hmm. who actually uh, want to say, I don't want those privileges. Mm -hmm. Please, uh, who believe in power and agency of women, mm -hmm. who believe that women can, can also do it. Mm -hmm. Women have rights. Mm -hmm. So if you trash all of them, I think don't... Uh, you bring a problem. It's, it's not fair. Th there's, oh. something, there's something, Judy Kaila, I'm going to bring you, but let's, let's first narrow down on this particular issue that uh, Sylvie raised or brought uh, here. Positive, discriminatory uh, uh, actions. Policies, policies, policies actions. Mm -hmm. Which she mentioned. But, but today I hear of... Uh, some men say that this is actually what uh, someone was actually tweeting here and say that feminism is actually pushing for uh, you know more women just because they are women to get these positions uh, and we have some men who have already started complaining why is it that uh, we are having them being given this position just because they are they, they are women and not because they can actually do that job if you go to the max you find that the men have to actually work extra hard uh, to be able to, to to get a certain grade to be able to qualify but a, a lady has certain grades which allows them to actually go there we have several people actually who are jumping up and down and feeling jittery about this i, I want to take your thoughts on this as a man on on how can we understand this as a way of bringing equality when some people say that it is actually more favoring one side and leaving out the other, the boy child. Like I said before, Anangwe, I think that where you take it from is actually the fact that those who fight um, against uh, uh, women's rights or uh, quotas or affirmative action are those people who don't realize that men have been having these privileges for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And when you touch, when you say you're going to promote women's rights, mm -hmm. they think you are touching on men's rights. Mm -hmm. But that's not true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By promoting women does not mean you're empowering, you're uh, disempowering men. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, I think, a misunderstanding. But uh, men also have to really come out, read a lot, realize that, oh, this is a privilege given to me. Maybe come out and, and, and realize how women have been left behind. There's that Another thing is to, to based on evidence, mm. research that shows that women have been left behind in terms of numbers. Mm. So if you look at numbers, then you realize that, okay, men uh, have been uh, somewhere, then we need to work on, 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 uh, on women's rights. We mm. need to empower them. That's where quotas come. Mm. And this is, this is the, the challenge, big challenge, managing the evidence. Yes. But the fact that we have, I mean, countries have uh, gender monitoring offices or structures, this is their role to monitor if the, the uh, boys and men need to be empowered, there's evidence. There should be evidence that they've been left behind in a certain sector, for right. instance. Right. And they find out. They find out. Uh, and it, because the reason I ask this question is, it is really risky to fix a problem and create another problem while at it. Uh, the issue here is that same issue that I've raised, that yes, we want to raise or bring the women who have been left behind for a long time. Mm. And some people actually question this and say aren't we going to create another problem in the near future where we'll start saying 
we have now more women than men instead of having equal uh, rights how do we deal with this situation where do we draw the line where do we say now we are equal is equality what we're looking for or, or, or is equity what are we looking for here i think uh Chirenga has touched on it somehow mm -hmm. uh in relation to how he was talking about um, uh, a long time that has passed mm -hmm. uh, when women were not at par with uh, the men and that we need to be given a chance to, to, to be able to attain where the men are. And uh, research and evidence can show where, where men, uh, when women are catching up or not and if men are having gaps or, mm. or something like that. Mm. And uh, as he has said also, uh, it's not about taking uh, men's rights or taking men's power. We are born with our power. We are born with our rights. Mm. So it's affirming those rights which have been discriminated and abused for, 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 for a long time. Mm. Mm. And uh, for centuries, that problem can't be addressed in a very short time. It can't be addressed in a short yeah. time. Judy Kaila, I mean, let me, let me bring you here. I, I, on the same, but also trying to understand your line of thought, I'm interested in understanding where you come from uh, as far as this thoughts that you have mostly in many cases uh, fr from your statements that you've actually made even public uh, you you sort of always say it, if it's an incident where a man is accused of oppressing a woman uh, alleged actually you would always actually stand by the woman and it is actually the man is guilty until proven innocent <laughs> this is the approach you no, take no, no, no. In, in your line is it you, you can actually accept or deny and explain further well I said that how I roll is if a man is accused of something, <laughs> I side with the woman. You stand with the woman. When I'm wrong. Yes. Because the system will always favorize men. Unless we change how the system is. <laughs> so what was your question again? Yes, that is exactly <laughs> what you've answered. That I want to understand. The, 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 this approach, what it seeks to aim or to achieve, when when you have feminists who feel or, or believe in your line of thought that the woman is the one who you need to stand for in a case mm -hmm. like that that you have talked about, that that man is actually guilty until he is proven innocent. You'll first believe on the side of the woman until that man is actually proven innocent i mean i want to understand how that affects or helps uh, this this struggle that uh, the feminists are um, for. listen jen mm -hmm. even with uh, my fellow guests one thing that we ignore is that patriarchy works through socialization mm -hmm. so the moment we walk into this world we found systems institutions mm -hmm. people mm -hmm already set with norms and how we should think and how we should operate. Mm -hmm. So which means through socialization, I was taught to behave like a woman that a patriarchal society accepts. Mm -hmm. So when I grow up and started questioning systems, I think that's how a feminist is born. When you start wondering why, why a system like this, why are institutions like this, why am I raised to feel like I'm not home in my father's home, mm. that I have to be chosen and given a home by another man, mm. why am I raised to always be asked about marriage or kids, what, you know, all that sort of societal pressure that we get as women and to start questioning systems and institutions we realize that as women we are also raised internalized sexism mm. so not only patriarchy oppressors also women oppress themselves because through how we are raised we become very hard on ourselves mm -hmm. to try to fit in to fit in our how we, we should be according to society. Mm -hmm. And the moment it's not that way, patriarchy claps back. That's why I think even patriarchy hates feminists. Mm -hmm. Because feminists are questioning, feminists are questioning systems. Mm -hmm. Patriarchy doesn't like that. 
A judge isn't someone who wants to change things that they are. And men in power will not like that we want to abolish institutions that have been abusing men. That's why they club back and they call hateful and they pass all the names. But it's fine because in the history of the world, there was no revolution without attacking the revolutionaries. There was no decolonization without giving name to hero that Thomas Sankara, who set us free. So, so that isn't my issue. Right. So my approach comes from a point that feminism up to now has been chit-chatting with patriarchy. Okay. You keep trying to defend women's rights, but not defend men. Because the moment you challenge patriarchy, you have to defend men. They right. have to feel like they are shaken. So it has been about chit-chatting. So when I say that I'm a radical feminist, I'm not afraid to challenge this step. I'm not afraid. If I come to a system, I challenge the system until I get to the root of it. And not the root of the system, but many people have been abusing that system. Right. Loud and clear, Judy Kaila, got you. Now, it's time. Let's just quickly look at uh, what we have on our social media platforms. Of course, all you need to do is simply add the hashtag in focus rw and of course we will be able uh, to read some of your tweets right here we have mugabo uh, 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 on twitter who says the women that validate men are trash don't they have fathers brothers sons aren't they by extension fighting their own i, I want to hear this i mean uh, you said someone here said was it you that you actually agree if 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 it is the system you, you agree? Yeah, I think, it was you, uh, Sylvie. Yes, it was me. Uh, I, I was trying to explain. I don't think Judica was calling men trash, mm -hmm. but the movement uh, the, the, uh, was calling the system. Mm -hmm. The men have been in oppressing women. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this question we have really responded. So, so if, if, if today someone went on Twitter and said women are trash, I mean, what would be the sort of reaction that you'd expect to see uh, out there? Uh, as a feminist, of course, I would question that. Mm -hmm. So I will not agree that uh, women are trash. I will try to seek why is this person calling women trash. Mm -hmm. um, I think here Judy Kyle is not talking about men as... The, because I can see this, someone is asking if they have fathers, fathers or something. And, and attacking it, their own. She's not, address, she's not addressing that right. in the same... Uh, Individual. Right. So, 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 and, so, and even if she... Yes. I told you that I did my research on men are trash because it's not my movement. Mm. It's and trust me, when I would have created it, I would, I would have used another approach mm -hmm. because I know how my people think mm -hmm. and I would have preferred <laughs> to get into the root of the issue. How do your people think, but Judy Kaila? What, what do you mean when you say, I know how my people think? <laughs> that, that, that's for another day. That's for but another day. Men are trash. Right. So, that's why when, I, when we said that men are trash, the system we think. It's really a system thing. It's not for individuals. We are now walking around trying to figure out the good men out there. Because at the end of the day, men walk around with labels say, I'm a good man. But I, as a woman, I am even afraid to be with the men late at night mm. because of how they aggress me. So, so because they don't walk around with labels, mm. like, we are good men. Mm. We weren't in the honor of the movement, but not trying to go by it words. I think I think and I've got you, Judy Kaila, loud and clear. I've got you. Let, let, let's try to move just because of time. Another one from Ruda yeah. Nikki says, "What feminism is? Uh, the call for women and men to be treated equally. What feminism is not saying women are better than men and men don't deserve." The attention women do. Uh, do you agree with this, uh, Bonakirenga? Yeah, to some extent. Uh, I, I think uh, they try to to say what uh, feminism is, is feminism, and what it is not. What it is not. Mm -hmm. But the, the list of what it is not is actually very long. Mm -hmm. And this is what I said in, in the beginning. It's feminisms mm -hmm. with s mm -hmm. because. Um, I don't even think that uh, all the women have the same issues. Right. Because, and, and this is what happened uh, in the post, uh, post colonial 
feminism. Yes. When uh, they, they started questioning the ethnocentrism yes. uh, of the mainstream uh, right. feminists, actually trying to say, because let me give an example. Mm -hmm. If we say all men are trash mm -hmm. and all women are vulnerable, right? Um, there's a woman, a rural woman in um, in uh, in the rural area, Wamagana, for mm -hmm. instance. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's a rural woman in Wamagana. There's another rural woman in Wamagana who is living with the disability. Right. Do they have the same issues? Mm -hmm. So uh, this is why uh, feminism is, is quite complex. And mm -hmm. and so if you you generalize i think we, we you lose a point you, you lose so we need analysis we need to uh, not to generalize all men because we have main champions he for she mm, mm. Uh, we have president kagame we have the prime minister of sweden mm. i mean these are i don't think these are trash mm. i don't think i'm trash right uh, neither do i <laughs> we have princess from north on twitter uh, who says if we start referring to men with insults like trash then we won't get on the table together to fix issues of gender inequality these issues actually distance men from being part of the problem uh, solving i think uh, that one is loud and clear we have elizabeth uh, right here who says uh, that um, uh, the women that validate, of course, that's an, a response. And men who rape, harass, oppress women, don't they have mothers, sisters, daughters, and are, by extension, abusing their own? What a comeback. Is yes, yes. <laughs> yes, go ahead, Judy uh, Kaila. I can I, hear you. I, I, really, I really think you are giving a focus on men and women. Uh -huh. While we both know it's the system, it is. Uh -huh. That's why whenever you have to speak about it, uh -huh. They, they were not referring to big words. Of course, we have great men, great responsible allies. As I said, Thomas Nakara, the excellent president of Rwanda. We have responsible allies who are doing great work. But still, the system privileges them because they are men. And that's a fact. And, 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 she, and she talked about there is that tweet of Nikki. Can you go back to it? Right. I, I, yeah. I, we'll have to spend more time trying to scroll actually, back. I mean, there's so many. Anangwe, yes, yes. For me, I don't. Um, we'll I come back to you, Judica. Believe yes. in this attachment, as mm. in you can't understand uh, feminism or women's rights because you don't have uh, a mother, a sister, or uh, a wife, or something like that. It's about human beings. Mm -hmm. I don't have to have a sister or a brother for my human rights to be respected. Mm -hmm. We want people to understand women's rights are human rights. Mm -hmm. We are tired of that discrimination, mm -hmm. which is, uh, as, uh, comes from patriarchy as a system, mm -hmm. and that's what we want to dismantle. Mm -hmm. That's it. We are not against exactly. fathers and brothers and sons. And, and again, I, I also want to, to say something she said, she, she calls men who can be described as, as feminists call yes. them allies yes I, I don't agree with her because mm. when we i'm a feminist mm. i'm not an ally mm. i'm doing it i'm not doing it for Just someone to back them up. I, i'm i'm mm. doing it because mm. i you think that's the it. right thing to do mm. Mm. Uh, so if you call me an ally I'll, uh, th there should be ownership and this is what the uh, uh, the foreign minister of sweden said mm. uh, among the i mean so many things she said she said we should own it mm -hmm we meaning even men mm -hmm. so if you call me an ally you're actually discriminating me yes because i'm a feminist mm -hmm. I've, I've i've born uh, you know in in a family of so many men mm -hmm. and i don't need a sister to to know that to you know understand. I need to, yeah to understand it's, that mm -hmm. no it's about human rights it's about yeah. resources mm -hmm. it's about representativity mm -hmm. it's about rights mm -hmm. so those are actually three uh, core uh, three uh, hours uh, that make core mandate of uh, uh, Swedish feminist foreign policy. And if you look at it critically, mm -hmm. then uh, so many men are doing good things not because they are doing it for sisters or mm -hmm. mother. Mm -hmm. They are doing so it, it should because not be seen as men coming to back this group of people who are fighting for something. Listen, listen, Eugene. Yes, I'm going to disagree. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're not supposed to both agree. Mm -hmm. But when it's about race gender or uh, economic oppression i tend to believe that the privileged should not own the mainstream which means if a white person can come today and try to be the face of black lives matter i won't listen 
mm. because a white person benefits from white supremacy. Right, but but Judy Kaila, what what what, what Kirenga says, what Kirenga says, Judy Kaila. I need you to listen to me because we'll be able to con control this conversation because we also don't have much time to go. What he's saying here is when you say allies, then you, you mean that there is actually something of an us against them going on. And then you have people who are coming to back you up because you are in a fight against certain people. So they qualify no, to be called where, allies. That's what I'm trying to get. Yes. Because for me, feminism is a movement and sexism. And to end sexism, you have to challenge patriarchy. Mm -hmm. And men benefit from patriarchy. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the system still privileges them. So for me, responsible allies are men who believe they have privileges. Mm -hmm. And because they are men, they are going to have privileges that won't have. Mm -hmm. But they are ready to unlearn their privileges and fight for women. Mm -hmm. And for me, also feminist is a lived experience. Cannot talk about women's oppression without lifting it. Just as cannot talk about race oppression if you have not lived it. So I understand men are coming out of fighting for us, but I have to walk the shoes of being a woman to understand the oppression and really speak for it. So I call them responsible allies because they are ready to listen to men who are living the oppression and just unless they are people fight for them. The other thing he talks about is feminism being, being complex. Mm. Listen, let's now look at the theories of feminism. Right. Mm. Feminism is practical. It's a lifestyle. Mm. Yes, we have people who have written theories, name our experience, mm. but even women who are financially at dark I want to are understand. Feminine. Right. I Thank you. I want to understand from Judika. Is she saying that uh, men can't be feminists? She just said it's Im yeah, for you to be a feminist. It's important that you 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 have lived gone the through lived experience. You have lived the experience. Okay. I mean, do you agree with this? I, I don't. So, agree. so someone else who hasn't lived the experience has cannot be able to understand how to actually deal with the issues or the goal that feminists want to achieve. No, I agree with many things uh, Judika said, but uh, I don't agree her saying that uh, uh, men can't be feminists. We should put them in the box of allies. Because uh, for me, I believe that a feminist is whoever, a man or a woman, who really believe that there is a problem and we should fix it. Mm -hmm. Women have been undermined, women have been oppressed. Now we have to change the status. Mm -hmm. We have to change our, uh, our structures. We have to, t to sit on the same table and respond to this problem. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why she, she insists to say that men can't be feminists. All right. Annette, I, I think, uh, as we start preparing to leave, <laughs> I think yes. in the feminist movement, we are also allowed to be different. Yes, yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. She can believe what she believes, and Slivy can believe what she believes. That's the beauty of the movement. Right. Yeah. That our differences can be our mm. strength. Right. Your yes. differences can be your strength. Mm. And, 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 and I want us to, to, to take a look at... Uh, the role of feminism in gender equality, in bringing up equality, because uh, Kirenga mentioned the issue of the impact of the extreme feminism and what damage it can cause in the whole uh, ball game of, of, of actually bringing in equality. I need you to talk to me about what feminists should not do that if they do would actually hamper the journey to equality. Judy Kaila says it's about equity. But what of those who want to look at it from the equality perspective? I think for us, for me, feminism is about um, feminist analysis mm -hmm. and feminist practice. Mm -hmm. That a, each situation, each issue you meet, mm -hmm. you have to have a feminist uh, eye or ear mm -hmm. to be able to analyze how, what is the women's narrative? Mm -hmm. What are women's uh, representation? How are they being talked about? So what it's is not the about issue? women and men. It's yeah, just supposed to be women, women, women. Yeah. And, and, can, can and then just... also yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, see, of course, uh, the, the complexities around uh, the patriarchy system. Mm. So it doesn't end with just saying... Yeah. And, and just, just, just to add in, if you... Because you need to avoid... Uh, because what feminists are fighting for or fighting against is mm. domination mm. and if yeah. you you want to fight by through domination again 
then Doesn't you're, you're not making any difference. Mm -hmm. Because if, if it starts from, uh, it, I mean, feminism is, is very simple, as you say. It's very practical. But mm -hmm. you have to live it. You have to, um, even when you are fighting for feminism, you need to be a, a real feminist. Mm -hmm. Let me just uh, show you a very simple example. Right. Even a teacher in a classroom. Yes. If your teacher yes. comes to the classroom yes. believing that they are the only sources of knowledge, yes. you are dominating students. Mm -hmm. You also have to believe that you also need to listen to students. You mm -hmm. need to uh, make sure that you have a kind of a movement in a class where uh, students support one another, mm -hmm. where you listen to them, because that's transformational more than, and that's called uh, feminist pedagogy. Mm -hmm. So if you... If, you, if you're a feminist, you need to live with it. You need to live it. You need to always look at everything you do through domination. I mean, you need to avoid the domination. You avoid domination. Yes. And fight domination by... Exactly. By this, is, this is your approach. Uh, 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 let, let's read this quickly and then we bring back Judicaela and uh, hear from Sylvie. Uh, Nasra, African Nash at African Nash says, I just spent five days with five East African feminists and I got a better and clearer meaning of feminism. Before that, the approach has been different from woman to woman and had not taught me anything we mostly speak from a point of no information nasra would be really nice if you created a thread on what you really learned uh, so that many of us can also be able to uh, uh, learn from you rondon gold digger uh, says uh, let me just uh, go back to that particular uh, tweet we'll just be able to uh, refresh it and be able to see it uh, come through as we do that uh, it's important to hear from you uh, judy kaila what is your thought on that i mean you don't fight dominance by wanting to be dominant uh, because it creates friction. This is what uh, Kirenga says. Um, well, uh, as I said, because we challenge patriarchy, patriarchy feels that women wanting emancipation, mm -hmm. I mean libera being liberated so socially, economically, politically, mm -hmm. they feel like we are going to impose our domination. Right. This is not what feminism is about. Right. What what we want by destroying male dominance mm -hmm. is gender equity. Mm -hmm. Because gender equity can exist male dominance. But because patriarchy exists as a system, that shows there has to be one who dominate who dominates and the person who's being dominated. Mm -hmm. He feels like if the men are not dominating anymore, the woman is going to dominate. Mm. This is not the case. Mm. But those are patriarchal narratives. Mm. When they say the head of the house, as if two people can now manage a house. No, all this kind of narratives, that really shows it's the fear that reigns in patriarchy as a system. Mm. If we give women power, aren't they going to oh, dominate? No, mm. that's not what we are about. We are about fair treatment both women and women by accessing equal opportunities, equal, equal things, regardless of their gender. That's what we are about. It has nothing to do with dominance. Right. Nothing to do but with again, dominance. But again, yeah. is afraid of dominance. And right. actually, uh, that uh, subconscious fear yes. is the uh, one that is... I want us to take now our, our final thoughts as we mm. go, because I'm told we have very few minutes to go. I want to read your thoughts. Is there an end game? Do feminists have a target? that this is what you want to achieve by this uh, period? Uh, is there an end game? What, what, what do feminists want to achieve? The end game is the uh, ending of a patriarchy system mm -hmm. yeah, this ever where end? men and women are equal. Mm -hmm. Yes. In treatment, politically, economically, and socially. Mm -hmm. We don't have uh, like a timeline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, We have uh, principles that we follow that guide our practice and mm -hmm. analysis of situations. Mm -hmm. And our end goal is the uh, end of patriarchy. End of patriarchy. Yeah. Kirenga, I mean, where do you see the, the loopholes, the gaps that would not make it easy for this goal to be met? Uh, there are always big gaps. Mm -hmm. uh, if men don't realize and reflect on their privileges, mm -hmm. if uh, women, some women also don't come up to take up the space they are, they are given by you know good policies and laws for instance Rwanda and Sweden and others uh, there will be a big difference if for instance GBV section gender based violence is not uh, tackled there will be uh, a lot of problems if uh, women 
assuming that they are the, the victims if they don't have access equal access to resources if they are not represented mm -hmm. uh, yes yeah, uh, access and control and ownership mm -hmm. uh, and leadership if if you like if they don't uh, have access to uh, decision making positions so there will be no none, nothing mm -hmm. so men have first of all i agree with everyone that uh, perhaps we need to deal with the patriarchy a lot mm -hmm. but patriarchy the center of patriarchy is a family mm -hmm. And some families are headed by not men. Mm. Uh, women could also be at the center of patriarchy to mm. some extent. So it needs analysis, needs uh, constant monitoring, but it needs realization that we need to be. So we will stop uh, the movement when we have eco societies. Mm. And I don't think that will happen very soon. It will not happen very soon. Not quite optimistic. How about you, <laughs> Sylvie? Uh, first, uh, I want to talk about the agenda. I wish I could stop being a feminist today. Why? If everything was all set for everyone, mm -hmm. I, could, uh, I could not even come in this uh, show. Sure. Mm. Uh, so my agenda will not be, uh, I will not stop being a feminist until everyone enjoys the same opportunities, the same rights, like, uh, I mean, men and women. Mm. And um, as Agnes said, uh, Annette said, we are not yet ready to stop. So I will stop when uh, our culture will be fair to all of us. Mm. And I want to remind people to not be distracted by the number. When they are saying we have uh, a 64. high number, 64, uh, women in parliament, uh, but don't see the numbers. See what those numbers are doing. Don't look at only in parliament. Look at our CEOs. Look at uh, our mayors. Mm. Look at our heads of village. Look at in the professional settings. Mm. How many women do we have there? Right. But that's what the in problem the is with some people. In they the say, house. do you want them to have those positions just because they're women? So we have to change the system. Mm. We ch look at how many women do we have in science. Mm. We have the young girls really have been living with stereotypes, thinking that science is not for us. Mm. And parents mm. have mm. been really entertaining that. Right. Uh, what I'm requesting them, it's more to see the ability, not the sex. Mm. A young girl is requested to go to serve the family, to serve mm. food to the brother. So yeah. until we have changed everything, we will not... But can, yes. I, can I comment on Actually, the numbers? we are out of time, so oh. that we can give Judy Kaila her space also to give us her parting remarks. Judy Kaila, when will you stop being a feminist? when what happens just uh, very briefly never. because we're gonna go right now yes <laughs> never. Uh, feminism has healed me feminism has set me free i have no way of of not being a feminist mm -hmm. but i have to say two things before i leave one thing is patriarchy is promoting women's empowerment because patriarchy cannot afford not having women who do not work or not contribute into society. Mm -hmm. So we need to be careful when we talk about patriarchy empowerment and women being free as women. Those are two different things. That's why whenever I think patriarchy promoting gender equality, I get scary. Mm -hmm. But the future is really right for women mm -hmm. because it's step by step. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I see this generation mm -hmm. is anger. Mm -hmm. And anger is the reason women can vote today. Anger is the reason women can go to school. Because if back then women were not angry, not go on the street to protest, I wasn't I wouldn't been able to go to school, even vote or even work. Right. So I'm grateful for that today. Right. And the future is really bright. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yudikaila. Always a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you so much, our panelists also for making time to come over. Santeni Sana, I see Vanessa Rukundo uh, saying something very interesting here. RBA Rwanda, now is not enough for in focus. Please, don't you worry. I mean, probably we'll be able to find uh, something to work out on that. Thank you so much. So many tweets uh, have been coming through uh, right here, particularly on this particular issue. We'll be able to see you again uh, next time, same place and same time. The conversation continues on social media. Keep tweeting. The hashtag is in focus. RW and of course we'll be able to keep responding and exchanging uh, with each other concerning this particular matter we'll see you again next time same place as always my name is Eugene and goodbye for now <laughs>